I get a call probably, oh, half a dozen times at least every year saying, why are your taxes so high? And I have to explain, well, there's the mills rate, but then there's the property value. It's been 785 for the last four years. And even though the tax rate didn't change, the amount of money that comes into the city went up because property values have gone up. So property values go up, assessed values go up. The same 78.5 mills will generate more money on a property that's worth more than it did last year. We have in Florida something called Save Our Homes Law. And Save Our Homes Law says, if your property is homesteaded, if you have a homestead exemption, it's your primary residence, this is the place where you spend the most of your time, your assessed value cannot go up more than 3% any given year. That is the most it can go up. And the state sets that rate. It is 3% maximum. But for 20 of the 25 years Save Our Homes has been in effect, that maximum has been less than 2%. And a lot of years it's been less than 1% even. And this year it was 2.3%. So 3% max that you can go up on your assessed value every year, even though the fair market value could go up 10, 20, 30% in, in a hot real estate year, your taxes aren't gonna go up that much. Each year, the city commission has to vote on the millage rate, which is the tax rate. Currently, Steltona's tax millage rate, 7.85 mills. And we've had that same millage rate for four years now. That millage rate is only one part of what determines your property tax, however. The other in part is the taxable value of your property. And the taxable value of your property is the assessed value that's determined by the property appraiser on January 1st, less any tax exemptions that you have. Most people, it's the homestead exemption is the most common, but there are any number of tax exemptions that you can have that lowers that assessed value. Then that taxable value is multiplied by the millage rate to come up with your city taxes. The important thing to remember is a higher millage rate doesn't necessarily translate into higher taxes. Daltona's millage rate is probably higher than some of our neighboring communities, especially those that are out by the ocean, because those properties tend to they have a larger market value, larger assessed value, so they don't need to set their millage at the same level that we do in order to generate the same amount of money to run their city. Most of the taxes that come in about 55% of our operating fund is spent on public safety, and in Deltona's case, that's law enforcement, police services, and fire rescue and emergency services. The most recent fiscal year, for example, the city brought in about $20 million in property taxes. But fire and law enforcement services, all public safety services combined, cost about $23 million. So that's the largest expenditure that we make out of the operating fund. Property taxes are Deltona's largest single source of revenue, so it is what most of our operations run on. If we didn't have it, if it disappeared tomorrow, then the Commission would really have to make some very difficult decisions about what type of services the residents want, what the residents need, and what we can afford. So without the property taxes, well, we'd have to look at everything we do. We probably could not maintain our parks at the level that we do. We might even have less parks. That tax money goes to fund public works that maintains our infrastructure, our roads, our intersections. By law, the commission has to have at least two public hearings to approve the millage in the budget. They do a tentative and then they do a final, and that's to approve the actual millage and budget. They must do those public hearings at a minimum. And of course, those hearings, just like any commission meeting or workshop, are open to the public. The public can come in, the public gets a chance to address the commission, to tell them what's on their mind, what their opinions are. Deltona City Commission, usually in addition to that, I believe this year we had uh, two additional workshops. The commission, again, reviews the budget. They talk about issues, talk about priorities, and those are also open to the public. Anytime the budget is on an agenda to be discussed, it's on the website. So before the meeting, anyone can go onto our website. They can download that document, go through it, review it, and come up with any questions they want to ask or anything they want to say to the commission. Even if resident can't make it to any of the public hearings or our public meetings, they can send in contact to the commissioners through the website. They can of course send a regular letter. They can also call up here and, and leave a message to speak with the commissioner. And a lot of our commissioners do informal town hall meetings throughout the year. And of course those they can always, the whole purpose of those is for residents to interact with the commissioners, tell them what's on their mind, what's important to them, what they like, what they don't like, and so forth.